talk to you about the dangers of distractions. And in this video, I want to talk about one of the worst disasters in aviation history because it highlights the dangers of distractions. And for us, I want you to just think about this. How many people are so distracted on a daily basis? And we can be distracted by good things like work, careers, even family. But now many people are so distracted on a daily basis that they don't even know that their relationship with the Lord is suffering. A pastor by the name of Adrian Rogers once said this regarding people who neglect their relationship with God. The backslider is a saved person who's out of fellowship with God. If there was ever a time when you loved the Lord Jesus Christ more than you love Him at this moment, if there was ever a time He meant more to you, when prayer was sweeter to you, when worship was more real to you, when your service was more effective for the Lord Jesus Christ. If there ever was a time like that when it was more than it is now, you may be backsliding." End quote. If you're no longer praying, what's distracting you? If you're no longer spending time studying God's Word, what's distracting you? And there are all sorts of things that can distract us. Let's be honest. Imagine a person relentlessly pursuing success. The person who works all the time. The athlete that trains all the time. All of these people believing that it will bring lasting fulfillment. But just as the mirage in the desert can deceive, the pursuit of worldly success can lead to spiritual emptiness and a misaligned focus. Also imagine the person who's always scrolling through social media, consumed by the endless stream of images and updates. But just as the social media scroll can consume our time and attention, distractions can devour our spiritual focus and intimacy with God. And so I want to encourage you to pay attention to the following. In December 1972, the United States suffered one of the worst disasters in its aviation history when the Eastern Airlines Flight 401 crashed. The tragedy in this story can be found in not only what happened, but how it happened. One article reads as follows. According to a National Transportation Safety Board report, the pilots placed the landing gear handle down, but noticed the green light that indicates that the nose landing gear is fully extended and locked failed to illuminate. The pilot told the control tower of their problem and explained that they would have to circle the runway until they could find a green light. The control tower accepted and told them to maintain an altitude of 2,000 feet. The pilots put the plane on autopilot as they investigated the problem. Now, reports go on to suggest that for seven to eight minutes, the flight crew worked together to try and figure out what was wrong with this light. An article by NBC Miami reported on the incident saying, the pilots engaged the autopilot so they could inspect the light and the landing gear, but the darkness apparently made it hard to see. A short time later, the plane was cleared to turn back to Miami, and that's when a crew member noticed something was amiss. We did something to the altitude, the first officer remarked, and the captain's reply was, what? We're still at 2,000, right? The first officer asked, and the captain immediately exclaimed, hey, what's happening here? Seconds later, the plane crashed into the ground at 227 miles per hour, and at a distance of 19 miles away from the airport. Investigators concluded that the probable cause for the crash was that the autopilot was accidentally disengaged and the entire flight crew failed to keep an eye on the flight instruments. They were too distracted trying to fix the landing gear light that no one checked on the actual plane itself. Distractions in life can be devastating. Think about the damage that a distracted driver can cause. Think about the potential danger of being distracted while walking down a large flight of stairs. A surgeon has to tune out all distractions so that they can perform surgery. But for the believer in Christ, we should fight to maintain our focus on Christ. 
There has never been a time in history like we are facing today, where we are consistently bombarded with distractions. We are being distracted at every point, from technology to world events, not to mention the people in our lives. At any given time, there is always something or someone to distract us. But hear me, saints of God, if we allow them, if we give them access, distractions will cause us to lose focus on what matters most. What matters most is your walk with the Most High God. What matters most is your relationship with Jesus Christ. What matters most is whether you are obedient to God's Word or not. What matters most is that you love your neighbor as you love yourself and live a life that is holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. You see, the thing about distractions is that the enemy designs them in such a way that they take your time, they take your energy, they take and take from you, and eventually, distractions will derail you from your purpose. The enemy wants to distract you because he doesn't want you committed to Christ. He doesn't want you to serve Him faithfully, so He sends distractions that are meant to take your focus away from Jesus. Distractions are also there to starve your prayer life and to starve you of your time of worship. The devil is the author of confusion, and he knows exactly how to disturb, divert, and distract your attention so that in the end, your focus isn't on the Lord. The enemy desperately wants you to invest your time in meaningless things, he knows how to get you to spend time doing numerous things that are worthless, so you lose time. Distractions come in many forms. Distractions can come in the form of people and enemies who want to destroy you. Distractions can come in the form of entertainment. If you're not careful, you'll spend hours and hours watching TV shows and movies day after day. The enemy loves when we spend our energy on things that offer zero value to us spiritually. The enemy loves it when we focus on things that will never edify or build you up in your faith. We, as people of God, must guard our hearts and our time. We must stay focused and continue in God's Word. It doesn't matter how tempting it may look or how much better we think our lives will be with it. If it zaps your spiritual strength, we must turn from it and leave it alone. Children of God, it is so easy nowadays to be caught off guard and be led astray. There are all sorts of things that can hold our attention. It is so easy to slip away and not even realize that we have been caught up in the snare of the devil. Now, one of the ways that we can ensure that we are victorious is by keeping our mind on Christ. This may mean putting the phone down and spending more time with Jesus. It may mean turning off the TV or forgoing that trip out with friends. We are in the last days and time is short. Tomorrow is not promised. Have you noticed how the days are moving faster and faster? Nations are rising up against nations. There are earthquakes, famines, and wars everywhere. It's not even a shock nowadays to hear that some people are falling away from the faith. Time is truly winding up, people of God, and the King of Kings is soon to return. Will you be ready or will you be distracted? So let me encourage you and tell you, don't allow the devil to distract you. Don't allow the world to distract you. Don't allow sin to distract you. Jesus Christ is worth so much more, much more. And he is the one who truly deserves our attention. A restaurant in New York City had a tremendous rating from customers when it came to their food and service in the early 2000s. There were rarely any complaints. However, as time went on, the biggest complaint became that their service was too slow. The restaurant did some research and found that to be true. The average time for service in 2004 was one hour and four minutes. However, in 2014, the average time for service became one hour and 55 minutes. The owners were confused, as they had not changed much over those past 10 years, which would cause them almost to double their service time. After looking back at the surveillance videos from 2004 to 2014, they believed the cause of the delay was actually the customers. 
customers became so distracted by their cell phones that everything took longer, including ordering, eating, and paying the bill. The distraction of the cell phone had caused chaos for this restaurant. Distractions do the same thing in our Christian life. They cause chaos in our life by moving our eyes from looking toward Jesus to looking at sin. We need to turn from evil and look toward our beautiful Savior. Luke chapter 17 verse 30 to 33 says, So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, let the one who is on the housetop with his goods in the house not come down to take them away. And likewise, let the one who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. Jesus is talking to his disciples about his second coming. He reminds us that his second coming will be like any ordinary day. People will be going through their everyday routines. Then we get to verses 30 and 31, where Jesus tells us that we need to be prepared for that day and not be distracted. These illustrations are stressing that people will have no time to prepare when he appears. He then gives us the warning of Lot's wife. In Genesis, God comes to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah due to their rampant sin. Before the destruction, God comes and warns a man named Lot and his family who lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. God commands Lot's family to flee and not turn back. At some point, as they flee, Lot's wife looks back at the city. In an instant, she turns into a pillar of salt. Jesus is warning us here not to be distracted like Lot's wife. If we become so distracted by the world that we completely turn our eyes away from Jesus, we will receive judgment just like Lot's wife. When we make our lives about self-preservation, we lose our lives to God's judgment. However, when we give our lives up to following Jesus, we keep it. To be clear, there will be moments in life that distract us from Jesus. But although every believer will stumble at some point and even fall, those who continue fighting, those who repent and go to Jesus Christ, will receive forgiveness. True Christian maturity is not that we don't sin, but it's the fact that we turn our eyes back to Jesus when we fall short. However, many people have been so distracted by this world that they have never truly turned to Jesus. On Judgment Day, they will receive judgment like Lot's wife because they have completely turned and rejected God's love. There are so many distractions in life that can cause us to turn our eyes away from Jesus. Sometimes we turn and look to bad things, such as destructive substances, forbidden relationships, and lustful thoughts. When we do, we are looking to fulfill our own desires. However, these desires do not lead to the life that we think it will. Other times, we're distracted by things that can be considered good. We become distracted by our jobs, families, and hobbies. While all these things are good, when they force us to turn our eyes away from Jesus, they become idols. So we need to be on guard about any distractions in our life. Be careful being preoccupied with how much money you make, how successful your family is, or how much power you have. When good things become distractions, that can be a massive hindrance in our walk with Christ. Now, God is not calling you to leave your family or quit your job. Instead, He calls you to put Him at first and center in your life. He should be the focus. And while it may feel like you're losing your life by turning from distractions to Jesus, you're actually gaining life. Suppose the restaurant owners I mentioned at the beginning asked people to get off their phones while at the restaurant. It would lead to much quicker service times. What feels to the customers like a loss ends up being a gain. By getting off their phones, they gain shorter meal times, deep relationships with people they're eating with, and a more enjoyable meal experience. Of course, the customers have a choice to get off their phone. However, if they choose to lose a little, they gain a lot. The same is true when it comes to turning from sin to Christ. By turning away from sin, 
We stop focusing on fulfilling every desire we have. And the thing is, we may lose some relationships with those around us, and we lose the right to be king or queen of our life. However, we gain so much more. We get to be called a child of God. We get to inherit eternal life. And we get to have a deeper, intimate relationship with the one true God. In the same way that customers in a restaurant have the option to get off the phone and focus on the ones they're with, then we have the option to turn our eyes to Jesus. So let me ask you, what distractions do you have in your life right now that are blocking you from seeing Jesus? It may feel almost impossible to give those distractions up, but while it may feel impossible, those in Christ have His Spirit dwelling in them. And by turning from our distractions to Jesus, He clears up the chaos and leads us to true life. Seeking God every day should be the way of life for a Christian. God commands us to seek Him daily and not even to worry about tomorrow. As Jesus preaches the Sermon on the Mount, He says in Matthew 6, verse 34, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Since tomorrow is not promised, God wants us to focus on trusting Him today in the moment. We do this by running to God daily. We may worry about a health crisis or a financial situation, but God wants us to trust Him in those daily moments instead of worrying about what could or will happen. Lamentations 3 verse 22 to 23 says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases His mercies, never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God has given us enough mercy in the day to make it to the end. Why worry about life when God gives us new mercy each morning when we seek Him? 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3-6 through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Verse 5 says, Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. This means every thought in your life should be restrained. It should be bound under the rulership of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, the battleground is the mind. And so we need to be diligent when it comes to what goes on between our ears. <laughs>